Hi everybody, today we're gonna talk about Thin Lizzy and we're gonna shed some light on the style and technique of the singer and bass player Phil Lynott. Phil Lynott is one of the most respected rock and roll bass players in history. And a lot of musicians list his sound as one of the pioneering sounds of 70s and 80s hard rock music. Beginning his career as a singer and lyricist, it's no doubt that Lynott's bass playing is way more in the spotlight when compared to other players. Phil was an eccentric performer and his bass lines were an extension of his personality and led to an effective and busy rhythmic approach. Strumming along with the pick, Lynott relied on eight notes, triplets and his trademark hard-hitting attack. Throughout the years, Phil used a variety of basses, including a jazz bass, a Rickenbacker, a Fender Precision, a Schecter and a Roland bass guitar synth, among the others. He also changed his amplifier very often, so there's not a real standard when it comes to the actual sound. But there's a few trademark features that make him quite a unique player. So I put together a few tips you may want to follow if you want to bring some Lizzy into your playing. Tip number one, keep your left hand playing area in the middle of the neck. One thing that distinguished Thin Lizzy from other bands of the era is that they appear to have a lighter rhythm section compared to other bands such as Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple or Queen. This is partly due to the fact that drummer Brian Doney was not a particularly heavy drummer, but also Linus bass had a role in this. Phil's playing was very functional to the fact he had to sing on top, so most of Thin Lizzy's bass lines are played on the central part of the neck. I don't use many open strings, especially the low E, which is quite unusual for a rock bassist. Phil had big hands with long fingers and kept his bass very high up, so this is most likely the most comfortable picking area for him. The result is a sound that does not try to be heavy at all costs, but instead brings more of a classy and almost swing feeling to the whole rhythm section. Tip number two, more strumming, less downstrokes. In rock music, peak bass players normally tend to play downstrokes most of the time, to sound tighter with the guitars and to get that solid foundation rhythm section feeling, typical of rock bands. But Phil uses almost exclusively alternate picking, which again is pretty unusual for a rock bass player. As a matter of fact, he's playing the bass like an acoustic guitar managing to get a sharp and thick sound with a unique attack. Tip number three, play on top of the beat. There is a very subtle difference between playing on the beat, ahead of the beat or behind the beat. Someone calls it micro-timing, and it has more to do with the feeling of a certain instrument within the song rather than with a scientific fact. My impression is that Phil plays a little bit on top of the beat, slightly ahead of the metronome. The bass guitar in Thin Lizzy plays a major role in leading the tempo. For one thing, it's always mixed very loud, both in the records and live, and it's also the instrument that really sets the pace. Just look at how many Thin Lizzy songs start with the bass. So it's legit to think that this is how he would show the songs to his bandmates at rehearsal, just playing bass and singing along. Rolling Stones' Ronnie Wood has said that the Stones do not follow the band's drummer Charlie Watts, but rather follow guitarist Kate Richards. 
as Vani puts it, there is no way of not following him. So I guess we can say the same about Phil and Finn Lizzy. After all, he was the band leader and main songwriter. Phil was definitely leading the charge, also from a tempo point of view. Tip number 4. Signal pushed chords. Another typical feature of Linus playing is the way he underlined pushed chords leaving some space after them, whereas most bass players would keep playing to keep a consistent beat. Number 5. Try experiment with a flanger or a chorus. In 1977, Thin Lizzy started working on the Bad Reputation album with producer Tony Visconti, who would work also on the following studio record Black Rose. Visconti had already worked with David Bowie and T-Rex, and he was a bass player himself. With Thin Lizzy, he took the chance to experiment a lot with Phil's bass, mainly adding a chorus or a flanger effect on most of the tracks. Phil carried on using these effects also live and on the following albums, including his solo records. And this is pretty much all there is to say about Phil Lynott. He was a very versatile bass player who liked to experiment with different styles. We can also say that as any great 70s rock band, Thin Lizzy's songs feature unison and harmony lines played by both the bass and the guitar. Lineup normally fits in by either mimicking the riffs or by creating a contrasting part to provide a foundation for the harmonizing guitars, while solidly locking in with the drummer. To sum up, Phil was an amazing talent, without any doubt. Great songwriter, charismatic frontman and also a grooving, solid rock bass player who played for the songs rather than for himself. Still, many obscure Thin Lizzy songs have really cool and interesting bass lines. I'm going to put some of them at the end of the video, so make sure you check them out. Thank you so much for watching, let me know what you think about Phil in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Till the next video. The Hero Rode a white horse across the <laughs> Well, I've been the wild, wild round, sailed all over the sea.